Hi everyone, I have a selection of very pretty pictures by Ago to Pop um, with a Halloween-y feel, well, a Halloween theme. So I thought I would show you what I have and then I'm going to colour some of one of them. Now these are um, little witch designs. They're quite difficult to see, I think. Um, the sun is shining in my window and reflecting off the white paper. I'm going to come in as close as I can. So this is the first design. Um, they're larger designs. Sometimes she does her tinies. These are a different type. So we've got quite a lot of detail in this one. We've got obviously a circular design. And we have the moon and clouds and bats here with our witch. But also around the edge we have all sorts going on. We have um, bottles and leaves. We have a haunted house. We have another pumpkin and some magical bottles. I love this little mouse. Another little mouse here with some... Um, um, a sort of magical cloud and, and gemstones, more pumpkins. I think that's probably a cat, not too sure. And then more gemstones there. So that is the first one you get with this particular witchy set. The second one is this one. So um, she has coloured some of this already. I've seen a video as well that someone's done of this one, so or some part of it. So I'm not going to do this one on video because I've seen it done. Um, so we have our cute little witch sitting on some spell books, more pumpkins, and then sp um, more spell books and potions and spell books and things going around. I think it's a really lovely sort of tree type design, if you like, um, sort of a mix of leaves and, and Halloween. I think it's rather fun. But this is the one that I'm going to do a little bit of. Um, so we have a different a different here. It's still the circle design like they all are, but we have obviously our shelves with our different items on. So some are just plain like plants, but we have spell books and candles, um, gemstones and different things. So I'm going to just make a start really and do some of the items on this page. Now before I start I need to tell you two things. Firstly these are available for download from Agota's Etsy shop and in my description of this video there is a link to her shop and if you use my link you get 10% off anything in the shop not just these any item that you buy so that is the first thing I need to tell you the second thing I need to tell you is that YouTube has come up with some new little fun I've just got a book under there to lean on um, fun animations so if you click like on this video and watch the like button you will see some little sparkles come up which is really good fun and the same if you click the subscribe button so just for a little bit of magical fun it's actually not just for Halloween but I think it's a quite Halloweeny fun thing to do actually now I'm trying to decide where to start I may do which bits we could start the top we could do the bottle. I, hmm, I'm thinking I'd quite like to do this shelf. So I'm going to start there. I might not do the whole shelf. So there are a couple of things. Also, um, for those of you who make your own YouTube videos, there have been some changes which you may or may not have seen notice of that you can now use things like bold under italics bold italics and strike through in your video descriptions. Now, I've been experimenting with this and sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't work. So I think they haven't quite got it sorted yet. By the time this video goes out, I'm hoping they would have done. Now, I'm using my uh, my um, Polychromos pencils today. And I'm just going to get started on these couple of leaves here. Let's come in really close and just do a little close bit. So I am thinking um, leaves first. Um, should we do them, let's, let's do them a little bit differently to how I might normally colour leaves. So I'm going to grab my hooker's green and just do the base of the leaf with that. Um, yes, yeah, so they're, they're changing a few features um, you may have already seen. So yes, you can do bold. You do bold by putting a, a asterisk either side of the text you want bold, but I've tried it and it doesn't always work which is a little bit strange and disconcerting, but you know, I'm not sure if I'm doing something wrong or if it's just not working properly. As I say, this is light thalo green. They might have, um, they might have fixed it by the time this goes out. I'm going to put a layer of that on top. I've got this different leafy, magical leaf idea. 
and it might be a complete disaster and you might absolutely hate it but we'll see how it works out so I'm fading this green a bit that dark green isn't dark enough I'm going to go back in with a bit of more hooks green just to darken the base <clears throat> The good thing with your polys is you can layer them up. This is thin copy paper. I'm not using anything special at the moment. Um, I do have some thicker paper, but it's not, I don't know. I find this just as almost as good. So, right, I'm gonna use a yellow. <coughs> I know, strange. Um, I'm just playing around with some different colors. So this is, no, that's not what I want. Maybe it is, yeah. Yeah, it is, cadmium yellow lemon. It just looked wrong in the camera. I'm going to use a bit of it here, lightly, like that. And then on the tip, I'm going to use some pink. I've got to find the right shade. I want this, the light magenta. Oh, light magenta doesn't want to show up. My light isn't actually on. Maybe that will help. Or might just make it worse. Never mind. There we go. Gosh, it's been such a stressful morning. It's so nice to just sit down here. I'm going to get my sharpener. I'm going to sharpen everything and just go over that all again. It hasn't blended particularly well. And that's my fault, not the fault of the pencils or the paper. <clears throat> now back to my hookers. And really get in there with with a dark bit at the bottom and then really just fade it up um yeah it's uh my um my one son left the station fine my other son was about to leave and he said i said oh your train he's getting the train after i said your train's late he went oh i have to get the earlier one i was like okay get the earlier one so he caught up with his he left in a real hurry back to the light of hello green i caught up with his brother <clears throat> excuse me and uh they hurried to the station got their their train the, all the trains were cancelled apart from the one that was running too late to get them to uni on time ah, so i got these messages going should we get the bus when's the next bus what do we do so my son who goes one of my sons can get a bus so he got to the bus stop i'm just trying to spread that into the yellow a bit I find blending into yellow really hard. So he went off, jumped on a bus, abandoned his brother who can't get a bus. So you know, his brother messaged me, went, is there a bus? And I went, no. I went, well, there is one, but it'll get you near where you need to go. Back to the pink for a minute. Um, after your class starts. But the train that's running late that your brother was going to get that he didn't get because it was running late you could get and uh you'd be late but almost at about the same later anyway this is back to the you know um as you would if you get a bus you might as well wait for the train so he waited for the train <coughs> excuse me it got later and later but fortunately in the end he got on it and we had about three quarter of an hour wait at the station but he managed to get on it get the train and get to college oh, to university I mean I still call it college there we go now it's a bit different isn't it now our bottle bottles are hard aren't they um you're like Ugh, what should I do well I'm thinking if we make it a full bottle it makes it or a colored let's make it a colored glass bottle it's much much easier okay so we're going to use the cobalt turquoise and we're going to i'm going to show you how i color a bottle to make it really easy for me so start with this bit this i find is the easiest bit i need quite a sharp pencil because it's quite small oh excuse me sniffing i thought i got over the cold but it seems to be back now i want a bit of white there i'm going to fade it to here now I want a bit of white this side I just leave a gap it's not really showing up I can use a white pen fade to the middle so actually I'm not going to leave the white I'm going to make it quite intense you want it darker at the edge lighter in the middle and it looks a bit shiny like it's glass okay and then we do 
the same on the main bottle. I always put the shine right down the middle. Now, if you look at a real bottle of any sort, it's not that's not going to be how it is. But I'm just not I'm not going for realism. I'm going for representation. So I'm quite happy with it not looking absolutely spot on like real. So I'm keeping it fairly layered up at the moment. I'm going to start fading it now. So if here I want to start putting down less layers. Now remember you can always come back and add more but you can't take them away. Well, you can if you've got an eraser, but it's easier not to have to do that. So keep it quite light going towards the middle there. And you can see mine's really quite light and messy at the moment. So now I'm going to get, return to that edge and just layer up a little bit more. But stop here, because that's my going to be my lightest bit. Just heard a train. Sounds like they're running again. Apparently a train had broken down, and so they were all cancelled. Um, I guess it it was um, blocking the track, so about three trains were all cancelled as a result. Right, now I'm thinking it might be even darker on this side, just because we've got those leaves right against it. So I'm just going to really emphasise it, but I quite like it dark, bottom and edges. And now I'm thinking under the label there might be a bit of shadow, and under here, I'm actually going to use I'm going to use different color for that I think let's use the Payne's gray for shadows it can be a bit more effective than just layering up the same color over and over oh here we go I think that's the Payne's gray it is so underneath this bit pop in a bit of shadow like that we can put a little bit along the edge of the bottle too if we want to i'm just gonna do that and then under the label maybe around the edge slightly too at the bottom we can even put a little bit on our leaves like that okay now we need to think about the sort of bung or cork whatever you might call it um and then what should we do to sort of match it in? We could, we've got all sorts of choices. I'm thinking maybe a purpley pink might be quite nice. Would it work? Let's give it a go. I've got this colour. This is the middle purple pink. I'm going to try it. You know, we're all magical. So why don't we do sort of pretty colours? So I'm gonna I want it dark around the edge, so I'm gonna keep layering that and then light towards the middle to make it look like it's a sort of glass one. I mean maybe it should be the same colour as the bottle, I'm just thinking. But it isn't. There we go. Oh, I can hear a I can hear a lorry or something outside making a lot of noise. There we go. And then our label. I quite like it to match that tie-in, so I'm going to keep using this colour, but just really lightly. Like that. So it doesn't look like it's the same colour, but it is. I think that's a bit too pale. A little bit more. And now we can put some white shine on our bottle. We need a white pen. Um, I just happen to have a Posca here within reach, just moving my tablet. I've got my tablet at hand in case when my kids come out of class, they'll need to me to check if the trains are running or to find them a bus. They actually do know how to check if the trains are running, but they're a bit less used to getting a bus. There we go, so we've got a bit of shine. Now we've got another bottle next to it. Should we do this one? Now this um, that's showing through is just a book that I'm leaning on underneath, so don't worry about that. Now this bottle, if we look at it, looks like it's got something in it. So I think what we'll do for this one is we'll colour in this liquid and then we'll make this look like it's see-through glass, just to show you a little bit of a different way to do a bottle. So we want a sort of magical potion, but we want a different sort of colour, so I'm thinking we could do it, we could do it orangey. 
I know. Right, I'm going to grab, I don't know what colour this is. It's 121. Oh, this is Pale Geranium Lake. Okay. And I'm going to do a bit. I'm going to make this liquid not all the same colour. So it looks a bit magical. So a bit here. A bit here. Now I want a darker area fading outwards. That's what I'm trying to do. Like that. And then I'm going to grab a sort of orangey colour. What's that? I think, yeah, the orange glaze. And do a similar thing. So make it, remembering that that's our sort of top level of liquid, so sort of fade. Put one close to this one. It should fade into that quite nicely. A bit here. Maybe in there. Then another, hmm, this colour might work. Because gonna it this is the dark chrome yellow, I'm just gonna give it a sharpen. Actually looks like it could be a pretty floral label at the moment, like it's sort of blurred um I don't know. I'm gonna fill in some of these spaces up here. A little bit similar to the orange, really, this colour. Um, I think I'm just going to go one a few, uh, do a lighter one as well. This is the 107, I think that's the cadmium yellow. To just do those little gaps. Now I was going to try and blend it all together but I actually think it looks quite nice with them being in their own sort of separate sections sort of thing. There we go, we've got sort of mixed potion. I think it's quite fun. Now let's do the label. <clears throat> I was thinking a sort of pale green might work. I'm going to go with this May green. We've got a bit of debris on there because I just thought it looked floral so I think a green might work now before we do the glass we're going to do the cork now with a cork I like to start with a light colour we're going to make it look wood hopefully so brown ochre now I find the colour of cork quite difficult to imitate because it's really very pale. Now, I've got this, I'm just sharpening, but the cork doesn't just stand on top of the bottle, it pushes into it. So we'd actually see it coming down into here a bit. So I'm just going to draw it in a bit more like that. So here we have quite a defined colour, and here it would be a little bit faded where it's inside behind the glass. Okay, so like that. And then we're going to grab a darker brown, I think this one will do. This is the walnut brown, I'm just going to sharpen it. And we're just going to put a few dots on our cork. Now I haven't coloured it very evenly, which is good, because if you think about cork, it's a very textured wood. And I'm going to try and add to that texture by putting some sort of dots and shapes in. Dots, dashes and bits, but trying to keep it a bit more faded on that bit that's in there. Now I'm not sure that this is intended to be a cork bottle because it's got a, a line drawn on it as if it should have some shine but I just wanted to show you how to do one. So there we are and now we need our glass. Now I use a cold grey for glass. I think cold grey 3 is usually quite a good choice. You want it sharp. Now there are lots of different ways of doing glass. This is one of the ways that I do it. Cold grey 3. So for this top bit here, I'm going to make it a little bit darker on the edge. My lead is very wobbly. And then a bit lighter to the middle. Because I'm thinking there'd be a shine down the centre of our bottle, just like this one. 
So a bit darker there and then lighter towards the middle. So we've got this sort of grey glassy look going on like that. You could put this on top of the whole thing if you want to like that. I don't want to do too much because I like how that looks. But we can get a white pen again to put some shine on and hopefully help to make it look a bit more glassy. So this is the same Posca that we used before. And we're going to take it from the bit that has no liquid all the way through so that the shine looks like it's right on the outside. That hasn't shown up very well. Now let me just give the pen a shake. It looks better actually in the um, in the camera than it does in real. Sometimes going over the top is quite tricky. And you can just do dots and lines like that. I'm going to put a little bit on there and there as well. So there's our next bottle. Um, let's do this sort of jug of magical leaves, shall we? Or is it a magical jug? Were they magical leaves or is there no magic here? I think there's magic. So which is shell for goodness sake? Of course there's magic. Now, what colour for the jug? I was thinking maybe we could attempt to do a sort of bronzy colour. I don't know why that came into my head, but we're going to do it. So we're going to start with a dark sepia. This is going to be our darkest colour. And I'm just going to put a few little bits on the edge of the handle there. Down the edge of here. Yeah, bottom. I'm going to sneeze. And then just spread it in a bit. So you've just got quite a dark base to work with. Like that. And then we're going to go for a lighter colour. We're going to use our Burnt Sienna. It's a slightly orangey brown, which is what I want for my coppery colour. So we're going to extend this dark sepia. Keep it quite deep and then start to just bring it out a bit more lightly. We're still looking very brown at the moment but hopefully it will all come together I have tried this before once or twice <laughs> can't be that much different to gold can it <laughs> so just extending those dark areas really in a little bit to start with now like our bottles our main lighter bit's going to be down the middle because this would be a rounded jug so it would be lighter here that because that bit's closer to us i don't know why i always so assume that i'm wearing like a head torch and the light shining directly off everything maybe that's wrong but that's how i do it now i'm gonna get an orangey color next i think which one Hmm, I think I'm going to go for a terracotta next. This is quite a small terracotta, it's just a cotta. Is it ricotta? No, it's terracotta. And now we haven't got a lot of space here, so I'm not going to do too much here. Just a little, like that. Now I'm making this up as I go along. But there are people who have combos that they go to all the time that they use. And I know that Miss Martley, she has a whole combo list for metals. And I'm pretty sure she sells them on her Etsy shop. So if you um, want to try different ones, then that's worth a look. Just fading it a bit in like that. Now, I need a yellowy colour, but I don't want it to be too un-orange, because that's a word. This is... Mm, no. What's that? Let's try the cadmium orange next, just a touch. Um, I don't want it too orangey. But on the other hand, I don't want to lose the orange, so I'm just going to put a bit on. 
Now at the moment we have quite a textured look to this. Now, is isn't what I was going for. I'm going to use the dark chrome yellow. It's still quite orangey. Um, but I'm thinking that you sometimes get beaten copper items which have like dents in. Which maybe this bit looks like. But I haven't, because it doesn't do that all the way along. I think that isn't what I'm going to try and do. So I'm just going to go across this middle a bit. Filling in some of it, but leaving some white, so we've got to shine. Now, for me, this isn't even enough, so I'm going to go back to, not the dark sepia, but the burnt sienna. And I'm happy with the handle, but this, I'm going to put a bit more burnt sienna right from the edge and just bring it in, just to make it a little bit darker through. I'm just gently building up a layer of this until it looks how I'm in a way that I'm happy and I'm going to do a bit more terracotta as well I just felt that it went light a bit too quickly there wasn't a big enough layer of these colours but the joy with your polys is that you can keep layering and this paper isn't perhaps the best for that, but, you know, there we go. I'm happier with that now, much happier. Now, we've got our leaves and branches. Now, I'm wondering what to do with those. Um, whether we... Hmm. Let's do some silver branches. I don't know why. Just thinking I quite like silver. Now, we don't have a lot of space. So I'm going to grab my cold grey 5 and I'm going to go around the edges of our branches with this. It's very sharp. So I'm, I'm forgetting to breathe. I think I should try and breathe. Around the edge. Like that. And the same on this one checking my messages but my kids are in their classes now so they should be fine though one of them's got two classes and an interview today I, he said the interview is on an essay that he wrote it's a bit, sounds a bit strange but anyway he seemed okay he was going to read it but I don't think he got time in the end so I'll have to actually contact him in a minute now we use the cold grey through, remember, for our glass. We're going to use it again now for our silver. Now what I want to do is just extend that line that I've done already a bit further in. Oh, this one's really wobbly. Look at that. There. <laughs> I'm going to just sharpen it. I can't be doing with that really wobbly lead. Maybe that my sharpener's getting a bit blunt. I haven't changed the blade for a while. Oh yeah, that's still a bit wobbly. Mm. Um, hang on a minute. Right, I ended up using my dowel to sharpen it because that sharpener didn't want to sharpen it. But I discovered after that actually there were a few, um, there was a lead stuck in it. So that would be why. We're just pulling that in towards the middle. We want some white, but uh, not too much like that. And what I'm actually going to do is grab the silver pencil. Now, the silver pencil is not massively effective, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to just use it around the edge to, uh, oops, sorry, to give a bit of shine now you could use a silver pen or a um, um, a glitter pen or something like that to make it more silvery but I'm just going over the black line with this one and all the way around like that okay i don't know how well you can see the shine well you can there look 
it's just a little bit but I know it's there now our leaves we did these very magically with a mix of strange colours I think we should do the same for these now we could keep them the same because they're the same shape but I think it's fun to show you something a little bit different um, so my son's just messaged me hang on a minute Nothing urgent, luckily, but uh, I always think it's nice to reply. Now, I'm thinking I'd quite like the idea of purple and pink leaves just to go with the silver. I think they might work with the old um, bronze jug. Who knows? So I'm going to grab my mauve, which is the sort of darkest violet-y colour that we have. I'm not going to do all the leaves the same. I thought it might be nice to do a few different. And I'm going to try and sharpen this and hope that the sharpener... Yeah, it's working now. So I'm going to do, let me think, this little leaf. I'm not going to do it all the one colour, so I'm going to do a little bit here and then just fade it. Yeah. And this big one here. Yeah, my son just messaged me and said, why am I hungry already? And I messaged him back and said, I am too. <laughs> I told him to have his snack. He has got a snack with him. I hope he's got it with him, actually. Um, let's do this one. I need to try and make it look random, but not contrived. Not easy. Just fading it up a bit. And then maybe this one. Like that. And then I'm thinking I want my... The leaf tips, maybe in a, hmm, yeah, this colour. We could go, no. This is the um, light red violet, I'm thinking, just for different. Make it different. So I'm going to start where I started to fade my mauve. It's about halfway, maybe. And then just fade towards the tip. So it's a bit lighter on the tip. Be easy to see on this slightly bigger one. So starting here, and then getting darker towards the tip, like that, and the same with this one. And work them all. Now I know leaves aren't this colour and if you feel really uncomfortable with colouring leaves this colour then just don't. Um, do them a completely different, do them green, do them autumnal, do them whatever suits and feels right for you. Now I'm going to do the others a different colour. Um, blue, I know. Um, it's, I'm finding this a bit hard too, <laughs> but this is, I'm going to sharpen this one, this is the um, cobalt blue, and I'm going to start with the bases in blue, I'm just thinking they're magic, so they look different, you know, my only worry is that if I complete this page and I keep using so many random colours, I don't know how I'm going to bring it all together if it just might end up looking like a mishmash but it might just end up looking like a pretty rainbow of colours I don't know so I'm fading up but I'm trying to decide what to do with that tip I was thinking I could go grey um, or I could do a different shade of pink I might do a different shade of pink I think this pink might work nicely. This is the Pink Matter Lake. <clears throat> and I do what I did with the others, start about halfway. This will be a little bit harder to blend in because it's quite a different colour. In fact, I'm going to start the tip and fade it down. It'll be easier like that. And we get a bit of purple our pink and blue mixed together I think it's okay 
Now I'm going to grab my, um, I want to do some shadows. I think the um, Payne's Grey is going to be the best. Just trying to find it. So there it is. So I'm going to use the Payne's Grey to do a bit of shadows between the leaves. So where they're overlapping like this one, it's going to put a little bit underneath and in here. So they just look a little bit more three-dimensional. Oops, just trying to get that in the middle for you. So there we go. So there, I think that's enough for today. Um, those. I'm wondering whether should I finish the shelf? I don't think I've got enough days left in October to finish the whole of the um, page. But um, I'm really enjoying doing this little shelf. So I think I'll, I might come back and do tomorrow and do a bit more of the shelf. Um, and yeah, let's do that. Let's do a bit more of the shelf tomorrow. So yeah, come in, come back tomorrow. And because there's another bottle, but there's some crystals and a candle. So there's a few different things which might help you if you want to know how to colour those. So, you know, you never know. But yes, thank you for watching today. And as I said before, the... Um, the link to get to Agatha's, Agatha, sorry, I struggle with her name, Agatha's Etsy shop is in the description. So please do go and give her a visit. Just follow her shop and like it, even if you're not going to buy anything on there. And um, she does, if you find her website, have a few freebies. So they're worth a look at anyway. And maybe give her a follow on um, Instagram as well because she has some beautiful things and she does beautiful colouring herself so it's always nice to see what she does with her own pages as well but anyway thank you so much for watching hopefully I will see you tomorrow remember to do a little like and get the animation um, and, uh, and please subscribe so uh, have a super day and happy colouring <laughs>